the kids, ensconced in their own musical worlds via their iPods, found solace in tunes that spoke their language, a gentle ribbing of their mother's boring music taste forming a part of their departure tradition. Arriving at the school, they were met with the chaos of many reunions, the parking lot a maze of vehicles and emotions. Securing a spot on the far end, the unloading process was a testament to the journey ahead, challenging yet filled with moments of togetherness. Diane lingered, a mix of motherly love and the inevitable letting go clouding the moment. The goodbye was a silent promise of support and love, a reminder of the enduring bond between them. Through the years had brought familiarity to this ritual, the emotional weight of the first day back never waned. With hugs and reassurances exchanged, Diane watched her children blend into the tapestry of their school, carrying with them the hopes and prayers of the previous day's service, a beacon guiding them through the year ahead. As Diane navigated her way back home, her car transformed into a time machine, with nursery rhymes taking the place of the latest pop hits. This impromptu solo concert was a far cry from JB's school band performances, where his guitar skills and vocal prowess likely saved the school from more traditional and possibly sleep-inducing assemblies. Meanwhile, Sheila's drama club escapades ensured that the family had a budding Meryl Streep in their midst, capable of turning a simple recount of her day into an Oscar-worthy performance. Reaching home, Diane's desire for a serene bubble bath accompanied by the soothing saxophone melodies of Kenny G was a silent rebellion against the cacophony of a day spent in the trenches of parenthood and school drop-offs. The house, momentarily a haven of tranquility, was soon to welcome the bustling energy of faith, adding another layer to the domestic symphony. The household dynamics took a comedic turn with the arrival of Faith, her timing impeccable, as if she was the guest star on a sitcom episode about family life. The house help, a veteran of the family's daily dramas and a witness to the children's evolution from toddlers to teenagers, was roped into Diane's quest for a simple yet satisfying meal, a mission she undertook with the seriousness of a Michelin star chef. Diane's bath, intended as a prolonged retreat, was cut short by the pragmatic concerns of hunger, showcasing the eternal struggle between indulgence and necessity. Faith's offer to extend her stay was a plot twist that promised more adventures, ensuring that the house would not be devoid of laughter and companionship. As the week progressed, Tony took on the role of the master planner, his emails a rallying cry for adventure. His stories, shared over the phone with Diane, were the perfect antidote to a long day, their humor a testament to the shared joy and camaraderie among friends. The weekend shopping spree for Faith's house was a mix of practicality and optimism, a venture into adulthood punctuated by the purchase of kitchen essentials and the promise of future culinary disasters or triumphs. The realization that they had forgotten to buy a television was met with the kind of horror reserved for cliffhangers and soap operas quickly diffused by the pragmatic solution of spending the night amidst boxes and unwrapped furniture. Their first night in Faith's new abode, fueled by wine and takeout, was a celebration of friendship, a reminder of the laughter-filled paths they had navigated together. Amidst the clutter of unpacking and the anticipation of new beginnings, they found comfort in the familiar warmth of shared memories and the promise of many more to come. On Sunday morning, the tranquility of the day was set against the backdrop of anticipation. Going to church was out of the question for Faith, her parents were making their much-awaited visit that afternoon. The morning passed quietly, with breakfast leading into a lull where the only companion was the radio. Music filled the space between thoughts and conversations, a placeholder for the excitement that was yet to come. As lunchtime approached, the arrival of a small truck through the gate, followed closely by the familiar sight of her dad's car, signaled the end of their wait. Faith and her family hurried outside, eager to greet their visitors. To their delight and surprise, her dad had meticulously planned for the occasion. Not only had he brought a bed and a cozy corner suite, but also a gas cooker, laying the foundation for a home filled with warmth and comfort. In a gesture deeply rooted in Gakuyu tradition, her mom presented Faith with beautiful pots and pans, a heartwarming housewarming gift that spoke volumes of her love and blessings. The visit was brief but filled with moments of joy and familial bonding. Faith's dad, after spending some quality time with the family, excused himself to meet a friend, planning to stay overnight at Serena due to a morning meeting regarding a project close to his heart. 
Meanwhile, Alice and Diane, after partaking in the day's joyous occasions, took their leave. The bond between the friends remained strong, as evidenced by a lengthy three-way phone conversation they shared that night. The conversation was a blend of laughter, updates, and plans, extending until Diane and Tony found themselves lost in conversation until the early hours of the morning. Tuesday dawned with a flurry of activity for Faith. Engulfed in back-to-back -back major meetings, the day was a whirlwind, leaving her no moment to pause or breathe. Work demanded her full attention, and it was only as dusk approached that she managed to escape its clutches, arriving home just in time for dinner. Amidst this chaos, Brian, moved by a thoughtful gesture, had planned a surprise for Faith. Knowing the constraints of space in her mother's presence, he had purchased a 42-inch flat-screen TV for her, choosing to have it delivered without a note to maintain the surprise. Faith, upon learning of this, had to quickly fabricate a story, telling her mom she had arranged for the TV's delivery, a quick-thinking solution to an unexpected situation. As the week progressed, the excitement for the upcoming weekend trip grew, culminating in a fully booked adventure by Thursday, with everyone eagerly paying their deposits. The anticipation of shared experiences and the joy of exploration bonded the group further. Friday evening saw Faith, Diane, and Alice joining Tony, Robert, and Brian for dinner at a quaint restaurant in Westlands. The atmosphere was charged with the vibrant sounds of African jazz, setting the stage for an evening of relaxation, laughter, and the creation of memories. The dinner was a celebration of friendship, a prelude to the adventures that awaited, and a moment to cherish the simple joys of life. The night was a beautiful blend of music, conversation, and the warmth of companionship, a fitting end to a week of highs and lows, and the perfect beginning to an eagerly awaited weekend. The vibe at the restaurant was so upbeat that even the salt and pepper shakers seemed to do a little dance on the tables. Amidst walls adorned with African art and tables dressed in the big five, spontaneous bursts of laughter erupted, proving infectious. You could almost hear the Kenyan sculptures in the corners chuckling under their breath, joining in the merriment. After a delightful dinner where the food wasn't the only thing seasoned with humor, Tony decided to drop Diane off. One thing led to another, and he found himself spending the night, suddenly becoming an unexpected sleepover guest. Robert, in a twist of fate, also never made it home, possibly abducted by the night's fun spirit. Brian, ever the gentleman, dropped Faith off and retreated to his own abode, possibly to dream of Kenyan sculptures coming to life. Come Saturday, the girls, craving some quality meat and quintessential girl time, headed to Yukos and Katangela. The car turned into a makeshift sauna, forcing them to surrender to the air conditioning, a device so rarely acknowledged it was practically part of the car's museum collection. Their journey was an impromptu concert, belting out tunes with the kind of enthusiasm that makes you glad cars don't have feedback forms. Arriving at Yukos, finding a table on a packed Saturday required the tenacity of a detective. They finally claimed their spot, a table gloriously free of chairs, because who needs to sit when you can hover in anticipation? The waiters, doubling as chair scouts, embarked on a quest to furnish their table while Alice and Faith played meat sommeliers, selecting cuts with the precision of surgeons. Diane, meanwhile, orchestrated a symphony of drinks, ensuring their thirst was quenched in their absence. The afternoon was a delicious blend of sunshine, laughter, and the occasional unsolicited mail company. A waiter approached, bearing mysterious drinks from distant admirers. The ladies, masters of diplomacy, declined the Trojan cocktails with grace, unwilling to open their table to a siege of strangers. Despite their polite refusal, one bold soul ventured over, inquiring about their rejection of the friendly gesture. Diane, with the tact of a diplomat, explained, We appreciate the gesture, but we're fully stocked on drinks and camaraderie. We plan to hydrate ourselves into the night, but thank you. Their afternoon continued, a testament to girl power and the sacred art of graciously navigating unwelcome advances, all while enjoying the best meats and beets under the Kenyan sun. Thank you for tuning in again. See you next week for part 8. Please subscribe, like, share and comment.